This is Smart Poker Study, episode 179. I'm answering your questions about MTT leak win rates, study discipline, equity practice, and playing the player. In last week's episode number 178, I gave you my seven step process for finding and plugging leaks for online poker players. It's poker study time, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in and, of course, for telling your friends. I've got a lot of stuff going on right now. More podcasts every single week. My first book is off to my beta readers there. They, it's in their hands for the next three weeks, I guess I should say. And I'm getting their input for my second round of editing. And I'm playing more on Twitch right now. More on. Sounds funny. More on Twitch. I am playing on Twitch more now. And this is looking like a great weekend for a paintball. So things are shaking up uh, for a busy weekend for me. But heck yeah, a ton of fun. I love doing this stuff every single week. Um, but speaking of love, thank you so much. I've got so much love to my newest Patreon supporter, Chuang Lee. Chuang started off at a lower tier. Within a week, he bumped it up to supporting at a higher tier. Thank you so much for that support, Chuang. I really do appreciate it. It's guys like you, Chuang, who help me to just keep on creating the show that I love to do every single week for y'all. Your support shows me that you enjoy the show and that you want me to keep on keeping on. So to start your own support, everyone else out there, um, please go to patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy. There are different levels of support with different rewards attached. And next week, the rewards for March are going out to all my current uh, uh, supporters. So thank you very much for that support. You'll be getting your reward podcast and video next week. And of course, once you begin your support, you'll get access to that current month's reward and the archive of patron-only content. So for just a few dollars every month, less than one buy-in, you could be just like Chuang and just like everybody else that supports me on Patreon. Thank you very much. And of course, visit patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy. Alrighty, so it is Q&A time. We have four questions today from Stefanos, Lester, Danny, and Super Stick Boy. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today, along with screenshots and links at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 179. Alrighty, gambate! This is damn exciting stuff. So the first question today is from Stefanos, and it's about MTT leak finding. Here was his email to me. Hey, Sky, what's up? I was going through your podcast episode number 178. Great material as always. Highly appreciated. There's a thing I would like to ask regarding the paragraph about calculating the cost and defining the quantifiables. As a cash player, you use the big blind per 100 hands win rate. But as an MTT player, this doesn't say much, right? How do you approach it in MTTs? Well, cool. Thank you so much for that email and for the question, Stefanos. I do appreciate it. So I recommend that you use a combination of the normal big blinds per 100 hand. And you can also use a new stat that I've never discussed before. It's called all in adjusted big blind per 100 hands. Um, and then hold a manager it might be called like all in equity win rate or all in equity BB per 100, something along those lines. Uh, because it's the first time I mention it, maybe you've never heard of it before either. But if it's a new stat for you, take a look in the statistics guide within the configure menu on PT4. You can see the definition and the calculation right there or how it's calculated the formula. But it's basically your win rate that's been adjusted for the equity you had when you went all in and your opponent's hand is shown in the end. So let's say you go all in in a hand and your opponent folds. That hand doesn't get calculated into the adjusted or the all in adjusted big blind per 100 hands. So it's just all in adjusted when the hand gets to showdown. So the computer knows when you got it all in with pocket aces versus their pocket fours on the flop. This is your share of the chips at risk or at the chips available at the time. You can use the big blind per 100 hands. It is useful, especially if you're looking like at the early stages of tourn tournaments before there's a lot of all-ins. A negative number is likely a leak. So it's at least an indication that, you know, in the cutoff, in the big blind, you might have a leak here because your win rate is so ugly. But you also want to use that all-in adjusted big blind per 100 hands. You use that to see how the win rate changes with all-in equity uh, situations. So I have a screenshot within the show notes page where I have 
um, the big blind per 100 hands right next to the all-in adjusted big blind per 100 hands. So you can see how the differences might look in your own database. What you want to do is filter for potential leaks and situations where you see the two rates kind of differ and look for negative numbers as well. So in the screenshot that you can see, uh, there is a big leak that the cutoff has, or this player has a big leak in the cutoff when two betting pre-flop. So maybe this player is just too risky in this steal position and they don't give up steals too easily. Maybe they steal a ton and then they call a lot or they steal and then they four bet re-steal a lot. Or maybe this player just in the cutoff, they play ranges way too wide. It's going to require further diving into to figure it out. But you can see with that all-in adjusted just being such a low negative number, it's a potential leaky area. And in that same screenshot, you can look at the early position uh, win rates. It's positive under the normal big blind per 100 hands, but then it's negative for the all-in adjusted big blind per 100 hands. This means that we're getting it in with worse and we should have lost more chips just based on the equities at the time, but we're actually up uh, in big blinds per 100 hands because we've lucked out just a little bit and we've actually earned chips in the early position. So with this information, we should now filter for all in situations in the early position to see where we're making mistakes. Alrighty, thanks again for that question, Stefanos. I appreciate it. Next up, question two comes from Lester Leslaw, and the question's about developing study discipline. Here's what he says. Discipline! I need to study more, but I totally feel overwhelmed. Just bought a Deuces Cracks subscription and bought your book on how to learn. Have to read that. The first 15 minutes I've read is super juicy. So any motivational things you can send me for more poker discipline would be great. All right, well, thank you very much for that question, Lester, and for getting the book and for reading those first 15 minutes. Thank you. I hope you continue on and finish out the book, of course. So the discipline to study, it comes with time and seeing the benefits of study. It can be tough, like getting yourself, you know, committing yourself to daily or even every other day kind of study. But here's what I recommend. It's kind of a three step, three things that I recommend. Number one, commit to studying one losing hand every single day from your database. Now, this is an actual very easy commitment to keep. What often happens is you start this one hand, you study for five minutes, suddenly an idea occurs to you, or you just kind of feel like studying more, and then you go ahead and you do that additional study. Your five minutes quickly turns into 30 minutes or even longer. So I want you to make this commitment to studying one losing hand every day for four weeks, and then actually tally up, see how much time you actually end up studying. Tip number two, time block your five minutes or one losing hand of study and put it on your daily calendar. Make sure that you have like a free 30 minutes or roughly an hour or so, just in case that five minutes, in case you decide to make it longer. And study tip number three, commit to one area of focus each week with these five minutes. So you can decide to study three bet losing hands this week or two bet calling hands or C betting hands or double barreling or triple barrel losing hands. This will help to prevent overwhelm, and your game will improve even more than if you hit a completely random, different area of study with every single hand every day. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And of course, it has both of my books, How to Study Poker Volumes 1 and 2. So if you want a free copy of either one of those, just get that free Audible Trial subscription and download my book as your free one. Once again, audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. And a few more quick shout outs here. Carl Beard purchased the Smart HUD from me. So he went to smartpokerstudy.com slash smart HUD. He just got it recently. I'm sure he's crushing his opponents already with it. It is a lot to cover. The HUD itself has plenty of stats and the pop-ups can be overwhelming. So for you, Carl, or for anybody else working on uh, learning and using a HUD for the first time, take it one stat at a time and one pop-up at a time. Sure, there's a C bet, uh, there's a fold to C bet, there's a three bet, there's a fold to three bet. There's all these different kinds of pop ups, but just focus on one per session. So, this entire session, I'm focused on my opponent's three bet stat and the three bet pop up. 
The next session, I'm totally focused on their CBET stat and the CBET pop-up. Go like that, Carl, and this complicated, uh, kind of maybe overwhelming HUD at first will become second nature to you. And I've got to thank Chuang Li once again. Speaking of the smart HUD, he got Poker Tracker 4 through my affiliate link. So thank you very much for that. He just went to uh, smartpokerstudy.com slash poker tracker 4, checked out all the information there, decided to buy it. And in thanks of that support, I sent him the smart HUD for that. So thank you very much, Chuang and Carl. Alrighty, back to class, poker people. Question three today comes to us from Danny Say, and it's about equity practice. Very simple, this is what he says. The one poker skill I know I need to improve is calculating equity. Well, thank you very much, Danny. And yeah, a lot of people need the same improvement that uh, that you have noticed. Uh, the best way to work on equity calculations is to whip out Flopzilla or even Equilab, but I totally recommend Flopzilla. And what you need to do is run through tons of common situations. As you practice this over and over, it'll start to cement the ideas, the equities, uh, the ranges, of course, as, as well. It'll start cementing those in your head, and then you'll kind of start using them naturally as you play poker. And I have a screenshot of this in the show notes, but if you look at a Flopzilla page or at, at the Flopzilla program, on the bottom right-hand corner is where it shows you equity, right? What you can do is right-click that spot underneath the dead card section. When you right-click it, it hides the equity calculations. So when you just pop up, you know, pocket aces versus pocket sixes, what's the equity? If you have it right-clicked, it'll be hidden. So you got to guess to yourself, eh, 83, 84%, somewhere around there. Hover over the box, bam, it pops up. And you're double checking yourself. You're checking your equity estimations. So that's the first thing I recommend. Hide those equities. So let's say that same thing, pocket aces. Maybe you're up against a flush draw on the jack of hearts, five of hearts, two of clubs board. And let's say you don't have the ace of hearts. It's ace of clubs and spades, for example. Well, on that two heart board, you don't have any blockers. So your opponent automatically has nine outs, right? Well, how much equity does, for example, eight of hearts and seven of hearts have? Of course, they have the flush draw. They also have a backdoor straight draw. They also have like a random runner, runner, two pair, an eight and a seven, or even runner, runner trips, eight, uh, you know, eight, eight, or seven, seven on the turn river. So you might guess mm, pocket aces here against a flush draw. Yeah, maybe 65%. But when you hover over that area, it shows you 61%. And then you just kind of switch up the situation. Okay, what if they had a pair plus a flush draw? Remember that board was jack five deuce? What if they had like king of hearts and two of hearts? You might estimate it at like 47, 48%. But when you hover over, it's 49%. So a pair plus a flush draw actually has about 10% greater equity versus your over pair. So what you need to do, Danny, and everybody else is just keep practicing different scenarios like this for a few minutes every single study session. And then, hey, you know how I told Lester to practice one losing hand for five minutes every day? Skip the losing hand thing. Just do five minutes of equities practice every single day. Eventually, this will ingrain itself into that noggin of yours. Alrighty, thank you very much again for that question. So, question number four comes to us from Super Stick Boy. What a lovely pseudonym. Uh, it's about playing the player. And this is what he said in an email to me. Adjusting my play to who I am playing against and not just my cards. I also need to work on asking for help and making good questions. And he also said something else in the email. He said, the one thing I want to do is change my shark scope flatline to an uphill growth pattern. Alrighty, well, thank you very much for the question, Super Stick Boy. So I have the perfect solution for getting you focused on playing the player. It is heads up, sit and goes. And I'm serious when I mention this. I did an entire podcast on it, episode 175. I did a full month of heads up, sit and goes just to force myself to play the player even more. And I freaking loved it. I think I kind of broke the pattern of robotic play. And I really am more focused on the player that I'm playing against, on their specific stats, their tendencies, uh, the type of player they are, how they react to bets and how they bet themselves, the bet sizes they use. I mean, I'm just so much more focused now on playing the player because of the entire month that I played uh, Heads Up, Sit and Goes. So check out that episode. I'm not saying that you should do that for yourself, but at least spend a week of playing heads up, sit and goes every single day. You could 
easily get in in hyper turbos or regular turbos you can easily get in 10 to 15 to even 20 a day so in one week you can get 140 150 of them get so much playing the player practice and then what you do is you take those lessons learned whatever they might be that's up to you to pay attention to take and to take notes but whatever those lessons learned you take those back into your cash games your mtts or your regular sit and goes all right and you had also mentioned the uh shark scope line good luck on that and as soon as I read this, it reminded me of Olivier Bousquet. His big motivation when he went from a fish to a pro was that uh, somebody mentioned shark scope and they were berating him in chap, chat. And he goes, shark scope, what is this? So he looked it up online and he looked up his, uh, his screen name and he saw a super ugly straight down to the right, just a terrible line. And seeing this really... He never realized that this kind of program existed that other players or that players can look up other players. So now he knew what everybody else knew about his game. It kind of opened up his reality or opened up his eyes to the reality that he was a crappy player, right? Well, this motivated him to study his ass off and to improve his game to go from a losing to a winning player. And this is what propelled him up uh, to the top of the heads up, sit and go, uh, heads up, sit and go ladder. You know, he's I don't know about now, I haven't really been paying attention to the pro poker world, but at the time when I first learned about this story, he's what, he was one of the best players in the world. So I'm sure he's still pretty up there. I just don't know because I don't pay attention anymore. Um, oh, and then the last thing you also mentioned about asking questions. Well, really, just please join the Facebook discussion group and ask tons of questions. And while you're asking, also answer other people's questions and help them with their own poker learning, you know. So if you want to join it, and I highly recommend that you do, just go to smartpokerstudy.com slash discuss. That'll forward you right to the Facebook discussion group where you just hit that join button. And I will accept you, super stick boy, I promise. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Study more often. I recently said everybody studies on Monday. Well, I want you to study every Monday and four more days throughout the week. If motivation is an issue or discipline is an issue as well, time block five minutes out of every day and review just one hand. Or, like I said for Danny, take five minutes to review equities every single day. You will be surprised how often your 5 minutes will turn into 30 minutes. Also, just in general, shorter daily study sessions, they're far better than spending 1-3 to three hours of study one day per week. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game! Oh, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody! Well, this episode is not complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 179. I've got screenshots and links to everything I discussed today. And while you're there, you can sign up for the weekly newsletter. Thank you so much for listening today. Make sure you enable my Alexa flash briefing skill. Just search for Smart Poker Study in the Amazon Alexa store. If you can type in the words Smart Poker Study, you can find me on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitters. And please send me questions to sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Alrighty, poker people, next week in episode number 180, I will start the leak plugging process for the leak of calling three bets too frequently as the pre flop raiser. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.